Hi everyone, it's Gabby here. I'm gonna take you through a quick tutorial to show you how to put together a product image gallery in your Bubble app. And the design I'm gonna walk you through is actually the same design you'll find on Amazon's product detail page. So right now we're looking at a men's uh, running shoe. And over here, we're uh, gonna be focused on the images. So you have a primary image or a main image that displays first in this big image window. And then you have thumbnails on the left-hand side. So as the user hovers over each one of those thumbnails, the picture that's in the main group over here on the right changes. And I'm just hovering, I'm not clicking. And you can see also as I hover over these thumbnails, the border changes to a blue to help the user understand where they are in the list of pictures. So we're gonna replicate that here in our bubble app. So I have this left side and the right side. And again, as I hover over these images, the right side changes. And I've got one extra piece of uh, functionality here, which is I'm also seeing a unique caption appear underneath the image um, that's gonna change as I move through these different pictures. So you have the ability to show an extra description or a caption of some kind. So let's jump into the editor to see how this all came together. I'm gonna walk you through the data structure first. So I'm working with two different data types. I have product and product image. The product data type is my main data type. This is where I would have most of the information about the product. So the name, the description, pricing information, maybe other marketing material or relationships to reviews, things like that. Now for this demo, I only really need the name, but imagine this is where you would have most of the information. And then we have product image. Now we wanna create a separate record altogether for every individual image, not just for optimizing the size of your records um, and performance, but also so that you can have this unique relationship between the image itself, this field right here, and its caption. Okay, that way we know which caption belongs to which image. You just wanna make sure that you have a relationship back to the parent product. So you can see the product image is kind of like the child of the product. If I go over to my app data, let's go to the products table. I have four products in the system right now. We're currently looking at the New Balance Running Shoe product. And then under my product images table, I have all of these records here that are all tied back to that one product. So I could have more records here that are tied to other products. Um, you can imagine that if a product has even just two pictures, right? If, if all of your products had just two pictures, your product images table is gonna be double the size of the products table because we're gonna have separate records for each individual image. So you can see how we're organizing this here. Okay, now let's move over to the design tab. So the way that I've set up the page is I'm, I'm creating a dynamic page. So the type of content is gonna be defined at the page level. I wanna set this to my main data type that I'm working with, in this case it's product. And this is what I would do um, if I were to recreate this entire detail page just like we see here on Amazon. Because most of the information needs to be pulled dynamically from the database and you know most of it needs to relate back to that one product detail. Okay, so same thing in our app, we're gonna have type of content product, that way whenever we navigate to it um, or uh, want to uh, enter in the URL ourselves, we can use a slug um, and Bubble will know to look up the right record and we can reference it in our expressions. So for example, I have a text here that's gonna display the current pages products name. So if I have a reference to the product then I have access to all of the fields within that data type. Okay, now down below, I have a, a group here that's organized as a row so that I can have a left and a right side. You can see my structure. I have group gallery, that's a row, and then thumbnails is the left side, selected is on the right. You can play with the dimensions to you know, make the thumbnails group more narrow than the right side. This way the right side has much more, um, it, it's much more featured. Okay, so within the thumbnails group, I have a repeating group to display all of the images that are tied back to this one product at the page level. So here, this is a repeating group uh, with one column, fixed number of columns, just one, and then a dynamic number of rows. So however many pictures we have in the database, that's how many rows will be created. Maybe one product has two photos, maybe another one has 10, okay? So the type of content here is gonna be product image, and the data source is a search of all product images where the parent product equals the current pages product. We're filtering our search so we don't see images from other products, right? Now, the, on the right side, group selected, the type of content here is also gonna be product image. And by default, we're gonna set the data source of this group, which should only be pointing to one image at a time. We're gonna set the default to the first thumbnail image, the first item that the repeating group is referencing. This way we don't have to do a search all over again for the same information. If we've already done it at the repeating group level, we can uh, depend on that to populate this group as well. So this group is going to the repeating groups, list of product images, and I'm just going to the first item. 
Okay, so this group selected is set up as a column. So I have the, uh, just show you here in the layout, this is a column. And then I have the image element, which is um, nice and big here. And this is gonna display the parent group's product images image. Parent group's product image, that's the name of the data type. And then that's the image field. I'm doing the same thing inside of the thumbnail, parent group's product images image, right? And below the image here on the right side, I have the caption. This is just a text, parent group's product images caption. You can design that however you'd like, all right? So that's to display everything. Uh, you know, if you just did this, you will, and you had records in your database, of course, you will be able to see all of that information. Okay, real quick here. If you're finding this helpful, we have so much more to teach you over in our free extended workshop at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop, where we'll guide you through our four-phase approach for going from idea to app. So if you're looking for a start to finish guide, go ahead and register for that workshop right after this video, you'll get immediate access. For now, let's get back to our lesson. Now we're gonna go through the interactivity of hovering over the different images on the thumbnail group uh, and have that reflect over here on the right hand side. Now we're gonna get the help of a plugin called Visibility Detector so that we can get this hover effect here. I'm gonna go over to my plugins list. I'm gonna show you which one it is. It's this one right here. This is a free plugin, Visibility Detector. This comes with an element that you have to add to the page called Visibility Detector. And it has two workflow events that will trigger automatically as soon as the detector um, enters the screen and exits the screen. Okay, so inside of this repeating group cell, I have uh, an element called visibility detector. I install the plugin and then you can search for that element by typing in here, visibility detector, there it is, and just drag it to your cell. The user is not actually going to see anything for this particular thing here, but you do have to have it added to the repeating group in order for us to work with the functionality, okay? Now, by default, I have this visibility detector hidden. Okay, that's important because of the direction that we want the hovering and the changing of the images to go. I want this hidden by default. And in the condition, when the group is hovered, and I'm talking about this group here, okay, so I have my repeating group, then I have a group inside of that cell. This is gonna help me with the, uh, the borders, right? So I can put a, a colored border there, so that's the group. Uh, and it's also gonna help me with containing this image and my visibility detector. So back to the visibility detectors condition. If that group is hovered, then this visibility detector is visible. If the group is hovered, then this detector is visible. By default, it's invisible. So every time I move my mouse over the image and back outside of the image, over the image and outside of the image, that visibility detector is technically appearing and disappearing, appearing and disappearing. We're not seeing anything, but there is an element that Bubble is able to detect uh, on the screen, okay? Now, what is that, how do we have that translate to changing the data source on the right-hand side? Because you'll see that as I hover and hover again and hover again, all of this changes over here on the right-hand side. So that's where we're gonna take one of those automatic workflows uh, that the plugin comes with. Okay, that's what I have set up here. So if you go to create a new workflow and go to elements, you're gonna find these two elements right here. Okay, uh, these you have to have the plugin installed in order to see these. So we're working with visibility detector enters screen. Okay, I'm gonna delete this one that I just created there to go to the one that I already had built out. Okay, so when the visibility detector enters screen, then we're gonna run a display data action. Display data is simply changing the data source of a container element. I'm going to change the data source of my right side here, which I've called group selected. Remember, this is the one where the, the data source by default is just gonna be the first in the repeating group. But let's say I hover over the second one. As soon as I do that, the detector will become visible, which will automatically trigger this event here, which will automatically trigger the changing of the data source of the group on the right. I'm going to display data in group selected. The data to display is the parent group's product image. The parent group of what? The parent group of the visibility detector. So if I hover over you know, cell number two, it's only cell two's visibility detector that becomes visible. So only cell two's data will be sent over to the right side. Okay, now you'll notice that as I uh, hover, it changes. And then if I leave, the image stays 
the same. It doesn't go back to the previous image or anything like that. Um, that's more for user experience so that things don't jump around on the user too much. So, you know, whatever they were last on, that's what it will stay on un until they hover over a new image. And that's actually how, I believe that's how Amazon has it as well. Yes, yeah, so if I hover over this one and move my mouse away, it stays on the last one that I hovered over. Okay, so that's the only workflow uh, that we have to get this interactivity here. And remember, because we're displaying data at the group selected level, not only is that going to then have a ripple effect and change which image I see, but it's also going to change the caption I see because both image and caption are tied to the product image record. One more thing here, at the group level here within the repeating group of thumbnails, I have a condition to say when this group is hovered or if this group's product image is the group selected's product image, right? If the thumbnail here matches the main image we're seeing on the right, then we're gonna give it a border. We'll color the border, we'll make it a little bit thicker so that it's visually clear to the user which one we're looking at in the overall list. So again, that's more of a user experience just to help them very clearly see where they're at. And there you have it. That's a quick look at creating a product image gallery in your Bubble app. All right, I hope that was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to register for that free extended training over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop. You'll get immediate access as soon as you register. And the link for that is in the description below. Okay, happy building.